Hi Catherine, um, it's great to see you again after you won the awards last year. Um, it was the My Officers Women of the Year Awards. You also went to claim the Woman of the Year Award overall. Um, and then days later, you were actually announced as Australia's first ever astronaut candidate. So an even more incredible achievement. Today, we're doing the 2023 Premier's Excellence Awards Ceremony. And fittingly, we're doing that on International Women's Day. You're there in Europe as Australia's first ever woman to be trained as an astronaut um, and first ever Australian actually to train under the Australian flag. So I'm so proud um, as an Australian to actually see that happening. Can you tell us about the last year and what it's been like for you and what have you learnt both on the job and about yourself? Such an honour to receive those awards and it really meant a lot to me uh, to be recognised for my space engineering career and my contributions in the public service as well. Uh, it was actually the same day that I found out that I was going to be coming here to Europe to train here as the first person to train as an astronaut officially representing Australia. So it was a remarkable day and it's been an absolute whirlwind of a year. And while, you know, it may seem like my dream has already come true, this is really just the beginning. What has been the highlight so far over the last year? Oh my goodness, there's so many highlights. It's hard to pick, but you know, day to day, I think my highlight has been spacewalk training. Uh, this involves getting in scuba gear and going under the surface of the water in a really large pool. Uh, and instead of looking down at the coral reef and fish, you're looking down at full size mock ups of the International Space Station and astronauts in spacesuits. And then you descend down amongst them and learn how to work in a microgravity environment, how to move safely around and complete missions like installing new scientific equipment. It's really incredible. I imagine that excellence is something very familiar to you um, and in particular the heights that you've achieved. Can you share with me what excellence means to you and how you strive to achieve it? A huge congratulations to all the finalists and winners of the awards today. I think you should all be so proud of your achievements. You know, imposter syndrome is something that's quite common when you're recognised for your deeds, especially if you're someone that's not used to being recognised, but know that you've been awarded these because you're worthy of them. I was certainly quite shocked and a bit of a deer in headlights when I received that OC PSE award last year. But be kind to yourself and know that you can use it to continue to deliver and inspire excellence in yourself and in others into the future. What excellence means to me has evolved over time. Astronauts are actually recruited for their ability to seek excellence. And this is something that I learned about later uh, in our classes this year. Astronauts are not recruited at all for their ability to seek perfection. They're quite different excellence and perfection. And that's a nuance that's often missed in that perfection is an outcome and the chasing of perfection can actually lead to frustration and fear of failure when obstacles arise. Whereas those who seek excellence are not at all afraid of uncertainty. They actually allow themselves to make mistakes, recover and enjoy the process of finding solutions, uh, which means you can become more relaxed in the face of pressure or complex environments and situations. And we focus on this in our training because it's really important that astronauts remain calm and productive in uncertainty, both in space and in training on Earth. Our lives depend on it. And I think, you know, in exercising excellence, it's in a team that it can be the most impactful. No one really achieves excellence in isolation, even if it might appear that way. They're in an environment conducive to excellence. And when people further the ability of an environment to create and nurture excellence in others, increase the ability of others to pursue excellence, that is really worthy of recognition. Catherine, you're a history maker um, and the first to do something um, can place a big expectation on someone. I can imagine being the first ever woman um, to be trained as an astronaut, but also the first Australian to train under the Australian flag carries quite a bit of pressure. Many of the finalists and winners here that we're recognising at our Premier's Excellence Awards are also change makers and are doing things that have never been done before. So, Catherine, how have you managed the expectations and pressure of such a significant breakthrough for Australians and Australian women? Well, it's such an honour to have this opportunity. I have to say, you know, that when I received this flight suit with uh, this Australian flag on the shoulder, it really meant a lot to me, uh, not just for me personally, but for what a significant breakthrough this is for Australia and particularly, I hope, for Australian women. 
It's really much bigger than myself. And that's because space is about the future, about creating opportunities for our scientists, our engineers, our researchers and our companies in Australia and helping to build our workforce for the future. It's about fostering that spirit of aspiration. But, you know, it's also important um, when I reflect on that, that I manage my own expectations of what I'm able to achieve on this training. I have to know that in managing my own expectations of my abilities, that I'm in the best place and doing the best that I can, um, and at the same time being true to my values in doing so, because it's never really an achievement if you don't remain true to your values. One interesting nuance actually about being here that keeps being reported, uh, it keeps being stated that I'm the first Australian woman to be trained under the Australian flag, which is true, but I'm also the first Australian person to be trained under the Australian flag. And that's interesting because I think it's evidence of the fact that this is unusual. Uh, there are barriers to address in our society for women in STEM. In Australia, it's something like less than 27% of the STEM workforce are women. Uh, for astronauts globally, historically, it's actually less than 10% that have been women. And this is an issue not just because everyone should have the chance to dream, the courage to dream and think they belong, but when astronauts are in space, they're important um, medical test subjects for research that benefits those on Earth. So until we have, you know, an increased representation of women in space, we're not harnessing the full potential of what space can do for women on Earth either. How have you kept pushing those boundaries and doing things that might scare you? So yes, the, the risks of human spaceflight are also sobering. But as a space engineer, I know how much dedication and expertise goes into the vehicles that we fly in up there. And we take these risks for good reason. The discoveries that we can help make in space are unique. They cannot be made on Earth and they're groundbreaking. And we're selected for our ability uh, to operate in that environment on behalf of researchers on Earth. And, you know, only by doing things that scare you just a little bit uh, can you progress your capabilities. You've got two girls who are in Germany with you um, who are obviously on an adventure of a lifetime. How do you devote time to these multiple roles? Oh, they absolutely are. Yes, I'm so happy that they and my husband are able to be here with me in Germany and sharing in this experience. Being an astronaut can actually be uh, really challenging for family life, not just when in space, but also here on Earth due to the really intense training and the schedule. And there's a lot of focus on supporting and including the family wherever possible. My daughters are five and seven and they've been here uh, in this training hall, um, which they call the astronauts playground. And they go to school and know the other astronauts' kids, which is great for them to be able to have that shared experience as well. But, yeah, you know, kids, they have this beautiful naivety about the world where they see no barrier to do anything, and I love that. Half of the class I'm training with here, there's six of us. Uh, half of us are women by merit, not by design. And, you know, my kids don't see being a woman as a barrier to being a pilot, a scientist, or an engineer, or an astronaut at all, which is something I'm really grateful for. Today we're recognising and ce celebrating the finalists and winners' achievements and commitment to serving the people of South Australia. Can you share with us how important the space industry is to South Australia and the impact it can make in each of these areas we're celebrating today? Um, and in particular, um, how this might actually affect any emerging young talent? Yeah, well, all of those categories really resonate with me. I think they're all so important to our state, actually. Um, and space is relevant to all of them as well. Uh, South Australia has a really long and proud history in space, from the first rocket launches in the 50s uh, through to being the home state of uh, NASA astronaut Andy, Andy Thomas to today where South Australia has become known colloquially as the space state um, and home to the Australian Space Agency, of course. It's one reason I moved back to Adelaide after spending most of my career overseas. Um, there's also 80 plus related space organisations here too, which is just incredible. And this is dynamism has meant that, you know, kids coming through today out of university, they don't have to leave South Australia to have an exciting career in space or STEM. And it's drawing in people uh, from overseas or Australians that left to go overseas, like myself and my family, uh, to come and work here and help build the workforce that South Australia needs for the future.
So while South Australia plays a critical role for space, it's also really important for South Australia um, because space at first, you know, can seem really niche, but actually it critically underpins our full society and economy. So having that capability in South Australia is great for our economy and our quality of life as well. We're also celebrating those in the public sector who are doing their jobs whilst also epitomising and living the South Australian public sector values of courage and tenacity, service, professionalism, trust, respect, collaboration and engagement, honesty and integrity and sustainability. You've talked a bit about values. They're very personal, but any of these values that resonate with you and your career journey? All of those values are absolutely important to me because I think they can all be summed up by one of them, which is trust. Living those values, all of them, is what builds and maintains trust within and between teams. And actually, a lot of our training here at the European Astronaut Centre focuses on methods and lived experiences on how to swiftly and robustly build trust in teams particularly to be able to cope with challenging or complex situations because in space and in training, our lives actually depend on that. So ultimately, to live the value of trust, what needs to be done is to create an environment of psychological safety, which is when people feel safe enough to share their thoughts and ideas without fear of retribution and to really pitch in and share their energy with everybody else. And to do that, you can't just say it. You have to demonstrate it and build uh, that trust that it's really an environment of psychological safety. And I can tell you it really works. The team spirit here amongst astronauts is just phenomenal and I really cherish it. So, Catherine, in closing, do you have one piece of advice for our finalists and winners about how they can inspire the next generation coming through? My one piece of advice would be to know that you all, each of you, has an incredible capacity to inspire. Everyone can inspire someone and you don't need a public profile to do that. You don't even need an award or a nomination. But what the awards can do, the awards of today provide you with, is a visibility and the credibility to have greater reach. So use that, use it wisely to contribute even more. And I think that when you're trying to inspire people to dream, to believe that they're capable of great things, they need to have the confidence to believe they can do these things, given sufficient time and effort. They need to have within their sphere of reach the visibility of possibilities and the education to have the knowledge to turn their dream or their ambition into goals. And I think that the ability to create this environment that enables aspiration is an important outcome of good public service for our communities. So what we all do as public servants every day is what makes it possible for people of all ages and all backgrounds to dream big. When I speak to kids, I ask them to reframe their ambitions, not just as what they want to be when they grow up, rather to ask themselves, what do I want to contribute? What do I want to help discover? What problems do I want to help solve? And what kind of person do I want to be as I do that? So yeah, I hope I can play a small part in this, just as all of you play a part as well. Thank you so much. What a wonderful uh, way to end the interview. I wish you really well. Enjoy the day, because it's just beginning for you. Um, and I'll watch with interest, but we certainly will keep in touch. Thank you so much, Catherine. Yeah, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure.